much consolation for Ajax. <laughs> And, uh, yes, absolutely. It's been a good season for them, undoubtedly. Fantastic season. Now, we'll stay with sports. Later on today, Qatar will inaugurate Al Wakra Stadium. This is the first of the eight stadiums to have been built and completed from scratch ahead of the 2022 World Cup. But with talk of FIFA expanding the number of teams scheduled to play from 32 teams to 48, is Qatar really capable of hosting the games alone? Well, Anim Nasebe is founder uh, of Cornerstone Global Associates, a London-based risk consultancy focused on the Gulf, and he's here with us in our London studios to talk through the implications. Welcome to Newsday, Ghanim, and great to have you with us here in the studio. My pleasure. First off, obviously, this is going to be a big event. I, I mean, I've I've lived in Qatar for for a long time, and I've seen the preparations. And every time progress happens, it's kind of a, you know, it's a it, it's a huge kind of fanfare. You'd expect that the timing though is really interesting because it's ahead of that decision by FIFA I think it's three days ahead of that right well the, the next meeting is on the 3rd of June so a couple of weeks mm. um, absolutely the decision is whether to expand to 48 um, uh, teams instead of 32 games you've got to remember when Qatar presented its bid in 2010 they uh, promised they'll be building 12 stadiums now they're doing eight yep. wh- which is just enough to host 32 games, 32 teams. If they expand to 48, there's absolutely no way they could host it. So what will that mean then if FIFA decides to expand to 48 teams? It, it does seem that it's bad news for Qatar. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's already under stress because of the uh, political risk increase because of the sanctions and, 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 and the boycott of, of, of its neighbours. Um, what this means, that Qatar has basically two options. One is to um, go to its neighbours and say, could you co-host with us? And then FIFA would have to say whether this is acceptable or not. Which will be hugely embarrassing for Qatar as well, given that yeah. They're on very tense relations with their neighbours. Absolutely. Uh, the second option would be for Qatar to say, sorry, we can't do it, please uh, take it somewhere else. Which, there is a precedence once in 1983 when Colombia uh, said, sorry, we can't do it, and, and then Mexico hosted in the, uh, the 1986 game. So there is one precedence, at least, of a country pulling out. 48 games, no chance of Qatar hosting 48 games in 2022. I mean, th- this World Cup th- has been such a headache for this country. It was meant to be their big moment, their big global moment of saying, here we are, small country, big impact, we're here to host the world. And it just hasn't panned out this way. You're absolutely right. I think, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are those who were involved in the bid, they're thinking perhaps we shouldn't have gone there because the, 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 the news story is breaking every day of corruption allegations, of problems with the political issues, human rights abuses, all sorts of things coming out. Um, uh, you know, the cost benefit seems to be um, increasing in terms of cost against benefit by the day and it seems that Qatar is is trying to prove to the world we're ready we're ready we're ready the world is not yet that convinced I mean the 3rd of June meeting I mean it is unprecedented in the history of FIFA that the issue of whether a country should host a World Cup three years before the tournament keeps coming up every day and 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 it's it's um it, it's absolutely right it's it's a logistical headache as well as a political headache as well as a financial one you know the Qatar is are spending up to 200 billion dollars on the stadium, on the infrastructure, Staggering. more than any other country has spent on the World Cup. $200 billion is about 30% of the country's wealth on three weeks. And, and I can tell you, sometimes, you know, driving through Doha, for example, life is just coming to a standstill because of the traffic, because of the construction. It's just a big construction site, the country. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I speak to many countries, they're thinking, well, the tournament is going to last three weeks. What are we going to do with the, all the stadiums? If you think about it in one way, the, the local population of Qatar is about 300,000. Yep. You could fit the whole population in half the stadiums they're building. That aside, many questions about Qatar's readiness in terms of, you know, LGBTQ activists saying that this is a big issue, that they shouldn't host it. Alcohol, the ability of citizens of its neighbours to come as well. Do you think this is going to be sorted out? Um, I, I, I think it's very difficult because the local population in Qatar is very conservative. They would not like to open up on LGBT, on alcohol and so on. Uh, Qatar's, when it presented its plan, it was that they're going to bring in the region, the Arab world. Uh, now it's at conflict, not only with its neighbours, with Egypt, the most popular populous Arab state. Um, so, so the boxes that, that Qatar ticked in 2010, on unticked. which basis, have been unticked, absolutely. <laughs> Ghanem, many, many thanks for this. Ghanem Nasebe there, founder of Cornerstone Global Associates, a London-based risk consultancy focused on the Gulf, on Qatar's readiness for the 2022 World Cup. Now, the fight against snake bites is going to...